With that reading from Numbers as a beginning and prelude to the desire of God that the Holy Spirit be poured out on everybody. No exceptions. So let's listen to this familiar, powerful, and even disturbing in some ways gospel of our Lord Jesus according to Mark verses 38 to 50. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say nothing, anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble. Cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. My brothers, my sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Michelle, would you put up the first slide there for the sermon? I'm going to begin with something that appeared in gratefulness.org by Larry Yang. It's a wonderful site. Every day you get a fresh new reading. Follow along with me. May I be loving, open, and aware, <clears throat> and aware in this moment if I cannot be loving, open, and aware in this moment, may I be kind. If I cannot be kind, may I be non-judgmental. If I cannot be non-judgmental, may I not cause harm. If I cannot cause harm, may I cause the least harm. I was attracted to this passage in its step-down elimination. Well, if you can't do this, try this. If that doesn't work, try this. But you know, the words cannot troubled me. What do you mean that we cannot be loving, open, and aware? Who says we can't? We have God's grace that will move us through whatever we need to have changed. You may have heard the term chakras. This is an ancient way from India about 1500 years ago to talk about what some can refer to as the subtle body. Let me just go through them briefly and I'm not gonna go into an extended thing with this. You can look if you wanna check out more, just Google chakras for beginners. And you'll have various sites that will point out what this all means. 
and it's going to refer to our gospel. The essence of that gospel are scandals, which is the Greek way of saying stumbling blocks. But let me just explain a little bit here. The root chakra, this is where we're grounded. The base of your spine. When you sit or stand or lie down, you become aware of the earth beneath you holding you up. You feel grounded. If you're feeling unsettled or confused and not so secure in that grounding, then you have some trouble with that first chakra. The second chakra, the sacral chakra, the propagation organs, the ones that allow our life to expand. If there's trouble with that, with sexuality, or something that's stuck there, that doesn't quite free itself to the higher levels, that's when we have a problem with that. The solar plexus chakra, this is one, it's just a little bit above the navel. It's innards surrounded with the kidneys, the liver, and some of the main organs there. It's the one that Jesus used when he felt compassion. The Greek word for that was he was really torn up inside, his gut. This is the gut. This is where we can feel compassion and, and empathy and wonderful characteristics like that. If you're having trouble feeling compassion or empathy, then you, there are different things that you can do to allow the grace of God to heal that part. As we continue on, there's the heart chakra. This is the one when we love. In the beginning of the pandemic, when we weren't expressing, uh, you notice when you, you just want to go like this. You want to take your hand to your heart area. This is where we love. If you're holding a baby or you want to hold someone, you hold them near your heart. And then there's the throat chakra. If you get stuck in your throat, or if there is a difficulty in you being transparent from what you're feeling and what you're saying, then there's maybe some stuckness, or a scandalon is the Greek word. There's something stuck there. Then there's the third eye chakra. This is where intuition comes in. Those inner senses that we have of being able to intuit. And finally, there's the crown chakra. This is the part where we just completely are open to spirituality. There's Richard Rohr, a wonderful spiritual writer, said this is where the mind of Christ is. Put on the mind of Christ, where the transparency of the presence of Jesus flows into us. Okay, thanks, Michelle. So what happens when we have difficulty in any area of our life? It's not that we cannot get beyond it. It's we need to ask the Lord to free us, to give us the grace to be able to move beyond whatever it is that is stopping us from being loving and free, joyful. These are gifts of the Spirit, and we can have those when we earnestly ask. I don't think that we really have to depart with body parts. It, Jesus uses this as, as an extreme example. When push comes to shove, just know what's ultimate value is the life in the kingdom. And if you're not there, you're, you're in the darkness. And if people persist in that, when they die, they're in darkness. However you want to construe hell, at least this we know, it's dark. And it's without the sense of God. I remember as a young child in, in grammar school, where the religious sister said the real pain the real pain in hell is the absence of God. If you need to feel the presence of God more fully, you need to become very quiet and let your awareness and faith say, Lord, I need to experience, to intuit all these different levels of our, of our, of our body. Conceive this way. I need to experience your presence, your fullness. Then I will not necessarily be a stumbling block for anybody, 
not the least of whom is myself. When Jesus says, when the little children, uh, if someone scandalizes them or is a block to them, put a millstone around their neck, he's really talking about the faithful ones. Not just little children as such, but those that are growing in the presence of God through the ministry of Jesus. We don't want to get anybody get stuck as a stumbling block in that way. And so we're almost, we're meant to become like children, no? We're meant to be, live in the kingdom because Jesus said, if you, only the children enter into the kingdom. Meaning, we haven't overlaid our lives with our positions, with our priorities, with our biases, with our prejudices. These are all stumbling blocks to ourselves, not to mention to other people. They get in the way. So we can become open, loving, and aware by the grace of God. Claim that grace and allow that grace to give you the joy that the Lord really has in mind for you. Mind to have the energy of joy radiating from all the different aspects of your life, however they're conceived or understood. Just let them flow out for the glory of God and for the help of one another. It would be wonderful if in our contemplating our life as a community, we would become more aware of how we can reach out to those that we've lost connection to. I can do something of that, but so can you. If there are folks that you miss seeing, give them a fall, give them a call. Be not the reverse of a stumbling block is be someone who paves the way for them to find that sense of community which is really what membership in this church means. It means that you are finding relationship, holy relationship, fellowship with each other. So my prayer for all of us is that we can grow in the challenges of this pandemic, that the pandemic not be a stumbling block. Yes, it is on some level, but we can thread the needle in new and wonderful ways to make connection deeper, more lasting with each other. Lord God, I thank you for Moses. I thank you for the outpouring of your spirit upon those 70 elders. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is available for every single one of us to be alive, to be connected, to be outreaching. Give us that grace, Lord, so that the bottom line, we're not going to not only do any harm, even a little bit of harm, but we're going to work our way up so that we can put on the mind of Christ and be loving, open, and aware. What this means, my brothers and sisters, is that in that openness, we start, while we feel grounded, we're still held aloft by the wind of the Spirit. That we're not stuck, we're floating free. Let's pray that the Spirit of God can surge up within us to give us that grace and peace that we deeply long for. In the holy name of Jesus we pray. Amen.